Today we're going to be designing and laser cutting some new Raspberry Pi cases from 3mm plywood using the Atomstack X740 Watt. This is a new laser engraving and cutting machine from Atomstack, which is largely the same as their flagship X7 Pro, but with a slightly lower power 40 watt laser. Being similar to their flagship model, it's got a number of great features, including an offline independent control terminal, so you can operate the laser without it needing to be connected to a computer, a 32-bit ESP32 based mainboard, and a really high quality all aluminium frame and electronics housing with a metal e-stop and buttons. Even the laser module is well packaged with an all metal protective enclosure and a small acrylic window to see the laser. They claim that the 40 watt laser module can cut through 15 mm thick wood and acrylic, although the acrylic will need to be opaque black as a diode laser can't cut through clear acrylic. I haven't tested the machine up to 15 mm, I've only used it on 3 mm plywood but it had no problems with it, even though plywood can often be a challenge to cut. Assembly of the X740 watt was pretty simple. Most of it is pre-assembled. You're really just assembling the four sides of the frame and then installing the gantry onto it. That said, if you haven't put one of these machines together or used one previously, then you might need to look at some photos or videos online to help you out, as the manual is quite brief in my opinion. It's basically a single page for the actual assembly of the machine, with packets of screws marked for each of the three steps. You then have an option of using a free software package called Laser Gerbil, which I've used previously on other lasers, or a paid for software package called Lightburn. Lightburn does have a lot more functionality, so if you're going to be using the laser for more complicated work or as a daily workshop tool, then you'll probably want to invest the $83 for a license key. I used Laser Gerbil for all of the work done in this video and it worked really well for what I needed it for. Once I had the laser set up, I tried a test engraving on this applied sample plywood, and I did some test cuts on my own plywood. There is a lot of variation in the wood and adhesives used to make plywood, so you usually have to do a bit of experimenting to get clean cuts. I used the provided example laser powers, speeds and passes as a rough guide and I found that two passes at full power and 200mm per second seemed to work best for my plywood. Once I was happy with the quality of the cuts I was getting, I moved on to designing the case. I've been wanting to create a more compact or low profile version of the 3D printed case I made previously, and if I make it from plywood then it could easily be assembled and painted any colour to suit the project that I'm working on. I came up with this design which I drew up in Inkscape. It has a pretty similar form factor to my other cases, but has a fan on top of the case that blows down onto the pile and exhausts air out of the vents on the side. I then put a fresh sheet of plywood into the bed of the X740 watt and got cutting. Cutting is pretty simple once you've got the hang of it. You'll also need to remember to adjust the focus of the laser to suit the material you're cutting. This is easily done with a single thumb screw on the front of the laser module and a small piece of acrylic between it and the material you're going to be cutting. You'll also need to use a fan or work in a very well ventilated room. One downfall of these open designs is that the smoke made when cutting just goes everywhere. I worked near a large door and had a fan set up to blow the smoke out of the room. One thing that this laser module does do quite well is blow the air away from the immediate area being cut. The internal cooling fan exhausts out of the laser end so this helps keep the lens clean and keeps the smoke away from the cutting area. With our case components cut we can now start assembling it. I'm just going to be using PVA wood glue to glue the pieces together. The tabs on each side hold them in position and keep the components square, so it's quite easy to do. I'm going to first glue the four sides together around the bottom. I'm also going to use the top cover to help hold them in place, but I haven't used any glue on it. Once the sides are dry we can add the 45 degree corner pieces. And that's it, the case is now complete and I can install my Raspberry Pi and fan into it. This is just done with four M2.5 by 12 mm brass standoffs and some M2.5 nuts. The 
The pie is then secured using either some M2.5 screws or additional standoffs if you're going to be using a hat with the pie. On the top cover, I initially planned on using some M2.5 by 12mm screws and nuts to hold the fan, but the pockets on the nuts are on the wrong side of the fan for the air to be pulled into the case, and the screws are too short to go all the way through the fan. So I'm going to have to revert back to pressing some M3 nuts into the pockets, and then using the screws that came with the fan to secure it. Lastly, I'm going to glue some 6mm brass standoffs onto the inside of the side panels, these are needed to hold the top in place with four M2.5 screws. We can then plug the fan into the 5V and ground pins and close up the case again. Now this case looks a bit basic and didn't really require much effort from the laser. So I decided to try to step up the design a bit and cut a pattern into the top and side panels as well. I integrated two patterns into the design. One with a hexagonal geometric pattern and one with a diagonal line geometric pattern. This was a lot more work than I thought it would be and really challenged my ink's capabilities, but it eventually started to look promising. So let's see what the laser can do with these pattern pieces. And with that we now have all the parts we need to make two more cases. Well if I'm honest, it took a few more attempts to get right. More cuts mean more time and more opportunities for things to go wrong. Like the laser being bumped while cutting, pieces getting caught on the end of the laser and causing the wood to move, and even a bit of variation in the plywood, causing the laser to not cut through it in the usual two passes. So after an hour of laser cutting that turned into five hours, I eventually had all of the pieces I need to make up the two extra cases. I'm going to glue these two together in the same way as the previous one, and I'm then going to paint them. I allowed the glue to dry and we can then move on to painting them. I'm going to use two speciality spray paints that looked interesting at my local hardware store. The first is a pearl white which has a bit of a glittered finish to it, and the second is a grey stone finish which has speckles of black and white in it to create a natural stone colour. And since I learned my lesson in the comment section of the last video that I didn't use primer or undercoat on, I'm going to be using a white undercoat on both of these cases before adding the colour. So let's give both cases a spray of white undercoat to start. After a few hours the undercoat is dry and we can move on to spraying the colour coats. I'm going to start with a glittered pearl white, and I'll be painting the diagonal pattern case with this. Next I'm going to paint the hexagonal pattern case with the grey stone finish. This paint needs around 24 hours to dry and is applied quite thick, so I'm going to avoid doing too much around the edges where the top cover goes on, and I'm also not going to do the underside of the top cover. 24 hours later and the two cases are ready to install the raspberry pies. I really like the way the pearl white has come out, it looks great with the laser cut pattern. The glitter effect is quite hard to capture on camera, but it looks really cool when the light catches the edges. The stone finish also looks great, it just took a really long time to dry. I'm going to install a plain black fan on the grey stone finish case, and a clear RGB fan on the pearl white coloured case. As with the previous plain case, the pie is secured with some M2.5 by 12mm brass standoffs. The fan with the screws that came with it, and the top cover with some brass standoffs glued to the sides, and some M2.5 by 6mm screws to hold it in place. 
And that's it, our two cases are now complete. Although the general shape is the same, they look really different now that they're finished off. I also like how you can partially see into the cases and you can also see the Pi's LEDs. Let me know what you think of the two cases in the comment section below. Do you like the laser cut patterns on the sides? They obviously open up the case a bit more to dust, but they still provide a lot more protection to the Pi than having the Pi exposed. I think as a future modification, I'll probably add a SD card slot onto each of them to make it a bit easier to swap out the cards. And I'd also like to change the top cover screw design, maybe having slots in the sides to screw directly into. Have a look at Adam Stack's website linked in the video description if you'd like to get your own X740 watt laser cutter to make your own plywood and acrylic cases with. Thanks for watching, please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.